Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening today. I got people here talking about um, the MCT Dance-A-Thon that's happening tomorrow from 1 to 9 p.m., so we'll, we'll have them on here talking about that and more, but we'll kick things off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 47 degrees outside. Your high is 72. Your low is 46. Your highs uh, on Saturday is going to be 67, and you can expect 30% per chances of rain with thunderstorms happening through Saturday night through Sunday. Sunday night you're going to have mostly cloudy while Monday things are going to start clearing out so if you guys are planning on going out and about um, today and tomorrow maybe those days to check it all out but let's talk about some news that are happening well the independent isn't the only business that uh the Enterprises is closing. Montana Magazine, uh, Matt Gibson announced on behalf of the Enterprises that Montana Magazine will be closing after 50 years of publishing articles and pictures on, on Montana living. The, the last issue will be published in as a retrospect of the last 48 years of publishing history. Ad sales have proven to be difficult to gain uh, to publish this magazine. The final issue cover is an image of a cowgirl leading horseback to a barn at sunset. It was shot by Todd Classy of Haver, who is a contributor since 2010. In state news, a Minneapolis bus line is doing some training to uh, look for signs of sex trafficking. Um, so uh, Jefferson Line is a bus that travels over 14 states between Montana and Minnesota. Busting on the Lookout is the organization, uh, uh, is a Colorado-based program of truckers against traffickers that educate bus companies on others on how to help stem the scourge of human trafficking. Jefferson Lines employees helped detect two, case of, uh, two cases thus far. Signs of traffic, uh, sex trafficking include a fearful, anxious, depress uh, depressed, submissive, tense, and nervousness, paranoid, um, exhibit unusual fearful or ang anxious behavior after bringing up law enforcement, and avoids eye contact. Of course, they may also show signs of being malnourished, and they're not allowed to uh, handle money. Uh, they usually let their male counterpart handle all the money. <coughs> most of the time, these victims are very distant and have issues with remembering most things. A lot of times, they seem wasted, but also they could be on heroin because that's the, one of the uh, main uh, uh, drugs that sex traffickers use to get, peop to get uh, sex workers hooked and um, addicted. In international news, South Korean President Moon Jae-in said, We have lived together for 5,000 years, but apart for just 70. I propose we move forward the big picture of peace in which the past 70-year-long hostility can be eradicated and we can become one again. He said this to uh, Kim Jong-un uh, just the other day to pass along the message that Trump and Kim should meet again soon to talk about peace negotiations. Um, it was the third meeting between the two Korean leaders. The first took place outside a demilitarized zone, before this year, South Korea presidents have visited Pyongyang, hosted by the late Kim Jong-il in 2000 and 2007, but neither of those visits included the chance to address the people of the isolated nation. Uh, the two leaders also reached a joint declaration promising to pursue peace, establishing communication channels, and develop new economic ties, including railway and roads, and a special tourism zone. Uh, so the next big step in the denuclearization of North Korea, which Kim has said he would do, so far many spectators have not seen any of the uh, uh, usual rhetoric that comes from Chairman Kim, but time is the only story tell in the rapidly evolving story. So that's kind of what's happening in the news in and around. I'm going to have some guests on here. They're going to show me a little bit of uh, dance. So when I come back, I'll have them on. So stay with me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi guys, we're here back with um, Olivia, Elaine, and Christine. And you guys are here uh, with uh, Showtime, uh, which is a dance studio here out of Missoula, but also you're here to talk about a fundraiser that's happening called the uh, MCT Danceathon. Correct, that's correct. So this is the first time this is going on. I see, I looked at the website, and it, see, it seems like your goal is to raise $10,000? Yes, that's correct. Yep, those $10,000 um, is our goal. However, you know, if we could exceed that, that would be ideal. Um, the $10,000 really is to um, continue to support the arts in the Missoula community. So that $10,000 is going to go towards continuing student programs that um, Missoula Children's Theater conti uh, continues to provide yearly, as well as continuing the community side of it with the productions we put on, five productions per year. Um, and so that really, that money is going towards continuing to support those things. Awesome. So how long have you guys been dancing so far? 11 years. You've been dancing 11 years? How old are you? 13. You're 13, so you've been dancing ever since you were two? Yep. Wow. What is your first memory of dancing? Just being with my friends and being on the floor. Nice. Rolling <laughs> 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 around. <laughs> Those are your memories? Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah. So I've been dancing since I was three, so nine years. And probably my favorite memory is probably all of the long days in the studio on Saturdays and all of the long days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how often do you guys uh, work on these kind of group projects? I mean like not necessarily projects but like fundraisers and events. Yeah so um, we have a, a performance company and so every year there's new kids in the company or continue to or kids that continue year after year so these kids are some of my most elite kind of can, longest students and so I brought them with me today but um, we'd love to participate in these kind of things. Um, what the fundraiser also does is give local studios an opportunity to perform. So the fundraiser kind of is set through the decade, so it starts with 1920, goes all the way through 1990, and each hour is a different decade, oh. and so it gives each, um, kind of each hour an opportunity to learn dances, or not each hour, but each kind of dance person in town. Um, the opportunity to come and perform during one of those hours. So our studio is performing during the 1940s, so these two lovely ladies will actually be performing a tap duo, um, because tap kind of became big in the 1940s. Um, and then our large performance company, which has 22 students in it this year, um, will be performing during the 70s, and so our huge performance company will be performing a number to the YMCA. Uh, not only are, we're not the only studio in town performing, we also have um, a salsa teacher coming from the Downtown Dance Collective, Heather Adams from the Dance Collective, Colleen Rosparski from um, the Ballet Arts Academy. So it's kind of an opportunity also for all of the dance community um, to get together and kind of support one of the big theaters in town where most of us do most of our performing. So that's another thing is that, you know, we don't have a lot of performance spaces in town. We have kind of the university and Missoula MCT performing arts. And so um, in order to keep those kind of beautiful facilities alive, we have to continue to raise money to keep, um, you know, things are always changing, updated, you know, lights, sound, all right. these different things. So, yeah. yeah. And the uh, community constantly supports MCT yeah. on many endeavors. Um, I remember the last fundraiser was uh, A Million Reasons Why. Yep, exactly. Which, you, of course, uh, the MCT did raise that money. Yep, so their goal is to re raise a million dollars, and so they were able to do that. And once again, that money, you know, goes towards continuing education in the theater arts for, you know, ages from, you know, three all the way through 99 kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yep, so this is a open for everybody to join in. Yeah. Um, the cost to get in is ten dollars. Correct. So that's if you if you just want to go down and you know just watch them dance and maybe get some ideas if you go clubbing or whatever. <laughs> um, but it's also just a good experience to get up on stage and just kind of show people what you got. Yeah, exactly. So basically what happens is there were some teams that were able to sign up and you actually can still sign up today. Create a team, come down, um, and so the goal is that you know those teams would dance throughout the nine hours. Some went on um, the dance floor every hour, every minute of every hour. Oof. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I think it will be. 
Um, but we also have food and drinks and prizes that will be given away to those teams. But also, if you just want to come for a couple hours or you want to come and watch some of the performances, um, it's just $10 at the door. If you are of legal drinking age, that includes an adult beverage. If not, there's also food and drink for those that are choosing not to. But you can come, $10 at the door, uh, stay for an hour, stay for a couple hours, uh, join the dance party. Our goal is that, you know, once my 22 students are there, you know, their parents will bring family members and they'll all come and they'll just be a huge kind of mosh pit dance party of the 70s. Um, part of our dance piece is at the end of it actually, we're kind of goal and I've told all of my students to go out and grab someone off the dance floor. Awesome. Um, because that's really, you know, dancing is fun. It's accessible to everyone, yeah. you know. And, and you can't go to the dance if I'm not dance. Right, exactly. So, um, you know, I think that's really cool. Uh, not only are we reaching out to people in the community, but also MCT um, goes out to 65,000 people children every year. You know, they work with that many students. Yeah. They go to 11, it's international. Right. They go to 1,100 different locations just in the 50 states in Canada. And then, like you said, it goes international to India and Germany and Bahrain and, you know, Italy. And so it's really this amazing program that we want to continue to support because it only brings more attraction to Missoula. Yeah. And most people who've never been to Missoula knows Missoula Children's Theater. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know that uh, well, you know we're all kind of wide set up on here, so we have a little more room here. So there's a reason for that. Um, we're gonna do some dancing. Yeah. So uh, since gonna... our major decade for our studio specifically is the '70s, Elena and Olivia are going to teach you one of the classic moves um, from the 1970s. It's called the disco finger. So take it away, ladies. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna start out with just pulling hands on one hip and pointing up, down, up, down, up, oh, cross. down, yeah, okay. down, And down. then you add your hip. When your arm is up, you put your hip back to the side and switch. Ah. And then if you want to get like really complicated, you can go both fingers. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> see what other decades have to offer that's a great uh, experience as well so thanks guys for joining me thank you so much and support your local theater yeah. all right we'll be right back right after ooh, after i trip <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Another big thank you to uh, Showtime's Christine, Olivia, and Lane for joining me this morning. Uh, let's talk about some uh, things that are not, uh, well, let's think, uh, we, we got something sweet, now let's talk a little bit about something sour, or as I like to call it, salty, and it's time for some pre-critic. Coming up is a whole bunch of movies that are happening this weekend, and we're kicking things off with yet another Jack Black movie. Hey, Jack Black... Kind of started off as that kind of like high energy, eccentric kind of guy turned into that. I I, I think he's the pretty much the same guy. But anyways, uh, Jack Black and another British star opposite um, of each other in a fantasy movie about clocks or whatever. Anyways, it's a coming of age movie about a young boy who becomes a wizard and there's magic in the house and the house has secrets. You know, and they have to find out what the secrets are, and they say that, oh yeah, the the clock's on the wall. If it stops ticking, it's the end of the world. But you know, maybe it's a new beginning. That's probably what it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like one of those movies where it's just like, ah, uh, the clock stopping isn't the end. It's just the beginning. Ugh. And that's kind of what the movie's all about. Anyways, moving on. This movie, I have no idea what it's about, except for the fact that it's a bunch of high school girls who get involved in a. Uh, kind of like an action thriller type of situation. So movies called Assassination Nation. In the in the um in the lines of movies that need to rhyme, this movie follows a bunch of girls and um I'm pretty sure they'll try to relate to the young generation. And there's a lot of killing and a lot of violence and a lot of stuff because you can't have assassination uh without some kind of um action thriller thing. All right, let's move on. The next movie is called uh, The Sisters Brothers. Uh, the movie dives deep into a Western genre because comic book movies have become their replacement. Hey, just really think about it. John Wayne movies back in the 50s and 60s would constantly get snubbed by the Oscars, so they do comic book movies, but as Westerns progressed, and like Westerns in the 80s and 90s, they got really recognized as being really well done and being pretty much Oscar bait at that point. So maybe give it another 30, 40 years, maybe comic book movies will turn out to be pretty good. But then again, there has been comic book movies that have won Oscars. Look at the original Superman. Uh, anyways, this movie with a con confusing title. You want to know how confusing the title of the Sister Brothers are? Well, in the trailer, they have to explain why they're named the Sister Brothers. Because our last names are sisters and they're brothers. And they literally have to explain that in the trailer. That's the kind of movie this is. And this is the kind of movie you expect. So anyways, this movie has a, a fairly familiar plot where it comes to two guys named the Sister Brothers who are hunting down a man. But then the man's like, hey, you don't have to hunt me. I have access to lots and lots and lots of the money. And they're like, okay, we'll give you a chance. So they all team up and then there's a money and then they there's a betrayal at the end and then they walk away or somebody, I don't know. There's always something like that that always happens in Western movies, especially nowadays because they're like, eh, that's what you expect. All right, I got a bonus for you. Uh, from a movie that doesn't know how to put a uh, PNG inside their IMDb, D, DMP, D, IMDb page comes Fahrenheit 11.9, which uh, basically kind of follows the election of Donald Trump and is directed by, you guessed it, Michael Moore. So this is a movie basically about um, liberal media really diving into the whole um, that the end of the world come because of Donald Trump. So it's almost impossible to talk about this particular uh, movie scene here um, without being political. And that's what you can expect if you go see this movie. Thanks, guys. That's pretty much it for Pre-Critic. I got a bunch of uh, Saturday shorts for you guys. These are a, com a, 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 a compilation of some of the uh, Saturday stop Saturday animations from the last couple Saturdays here at MCAT. So um, here's some of this. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about City Council, which they're talking about um, internships for uh, employees. <laughs>
Saturday Drop-Ins return for their third year of stop animation and media fun. Every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., your kid can work with Legos, play, and more to make their characters come to life. Animation isn't the only reason to stop in. Hi! Your kids can experience media through editing, voiceover, and short films. Games and activities to keep your kids busy all Saturday afternoon, starting September. Um, hey guys. Welcome back. <laughs> Let's talk about some city council stuff that's happening in Missoula. Come along with me and you will see a bunch of um, realistic uh, expectations. Wow. I just, oof, never mind. I'm thinking too much about Willy Wonka now. All right, Committee of the Whole, Missoula uh, Ordinance Chapter 8.25 addresses the prohibition of concealed or unconcealed weapons in public places. So they're trying to figure out how to expand upon that in the city ordinance to actually be in compliance with Montana state law. And while uh, they're working on this ordinance, they want to figure out how they can work on getting a, uh, a deal with like uh, Missoula Public Library and uh, Missoula Art Museum has shown interest in being a part of this ordinance that basically bans um, wep um, weapons or concealed weapons on the premises, no matter if they are permitted. So anyways, um, this is an update to go along with the state law, which is 45-8-351 MCA, which allows cities to restrict the carrying of weapons in public uh, rooms and facilities. So of course, Julie Marriott with this action item uh, talks about the gray areas of um, gun ownership of gun um, on property, basically. However, we regularly use buildings such as the Missoula Senior Center. And in the past, we've had to use non-school buildings during uh, school construction and during other activities at the schools. So that uh, kind of leaves um, a gray area, as Marty mentioned, in the law as to whether or not uh, weapons are allowed in those locations. So in, in an effort to clarify this matter for the public, I've worked with Marty Rabine, Jim Nugent, uh, the county election administrator, Dana Cosby, assistant district attorney, Matt Jennings, and others to develop language that would specify that weapons are prohibited in buildings within the city limits that are being used as election polling places for the duration of those election activities. All right. So uh, it's basically this whole idea is to clarify, um, you know, you're not supposed to have weapons during like election and booths. And since they usually do it at school, it kind of already covers it because most schools don't uh, allow any kind of concealed or carry arms on the premises as well. But of course, um, I'm sure you guys have already read in the newspaper about the uh, officer who left his um, gun in the bathroom of a MCPS school. Anyways. Um, Missoula Art Museum and Public Library wanted to get in on the prohibi uh, pro, um, prohibiting goods on their public property as well. The city d will decide if they're going to refer to this ordinance update as an emergency ordinance or which they w which would put it into effect by this November election. And the whole concept of having an emergency ordinance is to put it already through the system because if they just put it as a regular ordinance update, then it wouldn't go into effect until about 45, 50 days until after its implementation. Um, so... John Dabari talks about places uh, that have signs that versus state law. So if you see a sign that says uh, no, guns are prohibited, doesn't necessarily mean it's um, against the law. I know that in a variety of locations in the community, there are signs at doorways that say whether or not weapons are, are permitted. Um, and I'm... I'm trying to draw the distinction between having something adopted by resolution that says essentially the same thing that you could say at the door. Is, is this sort of a belt and suspenders sort of mm -hmm. approach where it's clear, you know, if you look at the door out front here, it says that you can't carry a weapon in here. And so it's not just guns, it's other sorts of things too. Um, so is this just a way for us to more publicly notice the fact that City Hall and Council Chambers is a place where those sorts of items are not welcome in addition to the fact that it's at the door or um, 
just I'm, again just trying to understand the ration yeah excuse me the rationale behind that because I assume that anywhere can post something at their front door and says say firearms or whatever may or may not be welcome and that's it may or may not be the same thing as having a, a resolution and I'm curious to tease that out I th those are great questions. The existing ordinance does specify that firearms are prohibited at city council meetings, and I think that's uh, without knowing that background, but I think that's why the sign is on the front door of this building. Um, the question, as I understood it from uh, discussions with Matt Jennings at the county attorney's office, was the, um, that, that it does leave something of a gray area and in the matter of someone actually asking law enforcement to show up and enforce something, that's where he felt like he didn't have a good solid answer to give people when they asked the question. And that is the reason for being uh, calling out some of these specific locations. All right. So just because you have a sign doesn't mean you have the uh, law that backs it up. Um, so that's kind of what they're trying to help clarify in some of these gray areas, which is one of the biggest thing is that, you know, you know, election polling places, Missoula County Fairgrounds, you know, that's not a, a school district. So people could... Um, easily just like have a carry on no big deal in their own mind you know it's no big deal but then at the same time it's just like one of the things is like they just want to basically uh, cross the t's and dot the i's in terms of this ordinance um julie merritt talks about how this ordinance can go into effect um assuming it actually plays okay anyways um it doesn't matter I think we kind of. I think you got the just. Just so you guys know that they're having a October fifteenth public hearing about this updated ordinance. So if you are somebody who is a concerned citizen about this particular ordinance about banning guns, um, which follows on the umbrella of uh, Mizar Museum, uh, the public library, um, election polling places that don't involve schools, um, this is something that you may want to go to the meeting. But also, don't bring your guns because. The city council chambers actually does prohibit um, concealed weapons or non-concealed weapons in their uh, city council chambers, just so you guys know. Um, land use and planning, uh, the urban uh, fringe uh, d uh, development area project, UFTA, was initiated back in 2007 to envision where the next 15,000 new residential units will be developed within Missoula urban service areas. The 2000 35 city growth policy are Missoula refers to UFTA um, I just like saying that uh, material and encourages the continued monitoring of residential growth infrastructure and associated impacts Garen Wally GIS planner with development services talks about our Missoula so our UFTA boundary, the study area, <coughs> is the same as the Our Missoula Growth Policies boundary, which is based on the urban services area, shown in red. Small difference between the red and the dark, thick black line there. Um, it represents over 40,000 acres of land and currently houses about uh, 93,000 people in about 43,000 dwelling units. Uh, for analytic purposes, this, region, uh, this um, study area is broken down into regions um, whose names are shown on the map. The open regions are primarily uh, open and resource land uses. We won't expect to see too much development in those areas. All right, so just guys, so you guys know that um, th where my mouse is getting bigger in this particular, oh, hold on a second. It's, it's this particular area that they are, are focusing on. It's a growth inward policy, and uh, a lot of this was initiated back in 2009 when they needed more affordable housing, and you know trends have actually changed as the uh, economics are starting to improve in the city of Missoula, but d high density living dwelling areas in the city of Missoula have been increasing while there have been annexations of certain areas in the city of Missoula as well. Uh, John Debari talks about plans and um, waiting lists for upcoming plans with this policy as well. So as new subdivisions come on, they add to the reserve, and as subdivisions expire or lots get built upon, they come out of the reserve. Correct. And so what's left in this case is 4,241. And so you can consider that, I'm not sure of another way of saying it other than reserve, it's sort of like the bench, right, if you're, if you're a sports team. These are the, the lots that are most likely to get built upon because they're a part of a, a, a subdivision that has preliminary plat approval, there's 
the expectation that services like sewer and water, parks, et cetera, roads are going to be provided to them. And so these are the most likely places where development is going to happen. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, most of the development that's happening thus far is on the north side. There's a lot of areas up there as well. And 42,000 units have been created in the Missoula area in the last 10 years, most of which have to do with renters uh, because at the time, 2009, during the housing crisis, it became clear that more people were looking for a place, affordable place to rent from, not necessarily buy. And as, you know, times have started to change, buying homes have become more... Um, lucrative in terms of moving forward. So, of course, so far, the north side has the largest amount of work done to it, which includes a quasi-industrial residential neighborhood throughout the TED Fund tax-exempt districts. Currently, 30% of current construction uh, benefits student housing thus far. Uh, um, this is a fun little tidbit that um, um, Garen Wally mentioned. Growth inward is the biggest focus on... <laughs> UFTA, excuse me, but uh, building outward from these uh, seed locations have been um, part of the meeting as well to see if this is something that the city wants to continue. And they always have updates every, I think it's every year they have an update on this just to kind of see where the city AD is growing, how it's growing, and to uh, avoid t too much high density housing, even though that's kind of what the R Missoula growth policy is all about, is about trying to figure out a way to have more people in a more central centric area and also to uh, promote uh, more um, healthy travel throughout the city of Missoula rather than having too much parking. And with these areas so close to the Missoula city center, it's good just to have that and move forward. But of course, this is something that's going to be continuing development, and this is an update only. Um, if you are interested at all learning more about this, there's a lot more information about this as well because the average, uh, per, the average number of people in these dwelling units is 2.3 per dwelling unit, so there's about room for about 92,000 people in these unit areas. So of course, um, they're moving forward on this. Um, they still have a lot more uh, work to be done. Um, they, Like they said, they have room for 1,500 units that can fit into these areas thus far. Okay, so the next big thing is admin and finance. One of the biggest things is uh, trades uh, workers. So these are folks who are uh, just fresh out of high school. Um, they're not looking to go, I mean, like people who are not looking to go in the military, people are not going to college, but looking for a career and an apprenticeship. And the city of Missoula is looking to help fill these positions. So local government can encourage recruitment of young trades people by passing apprenticeship utilization legislation. So that's a mouthful. Uh, such legislation can require the uh, portion of labor on public works projects must be performed by workers enrolled in apprenticeships. Gwen Jones talks about some of the history and about what's kind of going on in the city of Missoula. Workforce is a big problem in America these days, and it's especially a problem in Montana. We have an insufficient workforce right now, and the forecast in the future is not good. And that's based on demographics and, and some other factors. But it's something that we need to be paying attention to. And it's interesting. I, I went through my – I was looking at my files at home as I was working on this over the last month or so. And um, I had gone to a 26, January 2016 Chamber of Commerce presentation on the workforce shortage in Missoula. And I pulled out my notes, and I had all these great notes from my first month on council, so I wanted to share some of that with you regarding workforce shortage. And keep in mind, this was two and a half years ago. Wolf Amitz Bickler, the director of the Missoula Jobs Service, in his presentation said that Missoula, Montana will face a serious work shortage. Over 130,000 workers will be retiring. There are only 123,000 16 to 24-year-olds to fill those jobs. Plus, due to growth, there will be an additional 6,000 job openings created. So this is a, clearly a huge workforce shortage. And he tooted um, apprenticeship programs as being one of the most concrete, effective ways to create the workforce in the future. At the same Chamber of Commerce presentation, Barbara Wagner, chief economist for the Montana Department of Labor, also noted that a key tool in reducing time out of the labor force for retraining is apprenticeships. And then finally, on that same day, Wendy Coster of Diversified Plastics, a Missoula-based manufacturing company, noted that regarding issues in manufacturing in Missoula, a key issue was that there is a skills gap 
but that companies are happy to train employees. So I thought it was fascinating that of the three people presenting, this was a common theme. All right. So Gwen Jones uh, talking about a meeting that happened a couple years ago um, about something that um, the city of Missoula has not um, engaged in. Of course, Heather Harp ha- uh, responds to uh, Gwen Jones um, comments. It, it seems like the time is right in terms of trying to be proactive and not reactive um, during this time of boom. And at some point, we're going to go through another, another bus period, and we're going to lose employees again. And, and either we can let it happen or we can, we can try and move the needle here, and I think that's what we're attempting to do. All right. So uh, the city of Missoula, uh, moving forward, uh, from what I've seen through the past meetings of city economics, workforce, they've done updates on workers. Uh, the uh, I think it's the Missoula Organization of Employees or Employers, um, and they did an update. Um, and the one thing that I always seem to see all the time is it's not necessarily a lack of employees. It's the um, – but it's so called the uh, – the lack of on-the-job training uh, for young professionals. Missoula, in my opinion, my opinion, uh, doesn't have an employee issue, but an employer issue. I'm putting you on notice. Okay, okay so Alan Frankel, part owner con- uh, of a construction company, uh, is having trouble hiring skilled labor, and this is his reaction to this. Easy button for this, uh, but I, I don't think there is. And my opinion is it's it's not a resolution that's going to change that it's not um, you know any sort of regulation that's going to change that it's a cultural change um, my opinion is that we don't push the trades at the young level or at the the level of our youngsters when they're coming up through college or through high school and looking towards you know the, the rest of their future uh, and I have options other than college we force them push them encourage them to stay out of the trades and I don't know if that's purposeful, um, if that's done on purpose, or if it's just, um, you know, it just happens without us knowing it. But as a society, we're not allowing people to understand that there are uh, good careers, very good paying careers uh, in the construction and skilled trade industries. And All right. So um, currently, um, a lot of times in construction and skilled trade industries, um, um, my cousin um, it makes $18 an hour and he's 20 years old. So he works in construction companies as well. Um, and there's a lot of uh, back and forth. Of course, Mr. Frankel, he also thinks that uh, the trade ordinance would also not help and um, would would also uh, limit competition. And by limiting competition, you uh, raise the, um, you know, when competition decreases, cost goes up. Ben Dawson, IBEW with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, has this to say, has this to say in response to this uh, legislation. One of the things I'd like to talk about is sustainability, and we've all talked about the shortage of workers within the United States. <laughs> And that's just going to be the reality of it, that as more baby boomers are leaving the workforce, that we have to make a concerted effort to try and replace them and train them. And not saying this is the silver bullet or this is exactly what everybody's probably going to walk away saying that they want, but we have to start somewhere. Had we started two and a half years ago when Chamber of Commerce was meeting with Gwen and talking about it, we'd be two and a half years ahead of the problem than we are now. Um, I completely agree we need to get in front of high schoolers and give them options besides college and the military. (laughs) Not that I have anything wrong with either of those institutions. I think they serve our country greatly. Um, But it's important that we plug people in where their skills are going to best match. I see this as an opportunity to incentivize contractors. Instead of running a five-person crew of all journeymen who already know their craft, carry at least one apprentice with you. You know, be thinking in terms of, am I contributing to replacing the workforce in the future when a couple of my guys retire out? Am I ready uh, when my foreman retires in five years to replace him and then have somebody in a succession order going back? Um, So I think this request is a great start. Um, Again, it's still flexible. There's room for other ideas, and I appreciate you guys opening this up for public comment. All right. So, um, yeah, that was some of the comments. Uh, A lot of construction um, contractors that work with the city and work in the city of Missoula for uh, replacements and public works and whatnot all kind of have a consensus about um, they want to 
have more apprenticeship opportunities, but also they don't want to uh, disenfranchise uh, some people with uh, an, an unfair competition because uh, some contractors, they want to work with the city in terms of this, but other contractors um, who weren't at the meeting want to be represented as well too. So it, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting kind of evolving situation. And um, a lot of the contractors say they don't want the taxpayers to uh, pay for something like this, which they can already do in their own right. All right, so Dennis Bauman, D Dennis Bauman, uh, director, uh, deputy uh, director of public works, um, thinks this could be a good way to start a conversation between contractors and the city of Missoula. People here that um, that our contractors been in the business for years or whatever. So I think if both parties can work together, you might have a better solution than just a resolution. So to help out the workforce within the community. So, thank you. All right. So that was a, a, a nice little short uh, quote, but a very uh, poignant one as well. Um, some of the comments were against the city uh, budding into contractors' ability to get their own apprentices. Uh, um, Brian Von Losberg comments with uh, Dave Zinke with Knife River Contractors uh, kind of going back and forth. The fact that we don't culturally, you know, value those things and then the progression of opportunities with those things as well. But I wonder if if this isn't the opportunity to for the community to express that we do value these things. And I, I couldn't agree more that I think there's a whole cultural shift of which this may just be one small part of. But I think it's an important potential part for the community to step forward and say, we value apprenticeships and the, the, the possibilities that these lead to. We recognize that there is a cost to doing these things, but that's, in fact, how we recognize that value perhaps the, the most is when we you know, acknowledge that there is a cost, but we're willing to step forward and, sh and, and say, but yes, but there's a value that exceeds that cost. And I don't think it's just a cost in dollars and cents associated with implementing the program. So I know we don't have the time to explore that further, and I'd really like the opportunity for some more dialogue about it, but I heard a lot of those challenges that you were, you were mentioning, Alan, and I, I found myself kind of concluding, yes, and this is the opportunity to actually maybe play a, a small role in perhaps in conjunction with other communities in, in changing that value proposition. Um, and maybe the inaction that's happened at some of those uh, state level, I believe it was, groups that you're talking about, um, I mean, maybe this is the impetus because it will create some degree of, of uncomfort uncomfortability <laughs> to make up a word to move things forward. Um, and I just, I'm, open, I'm really interested in that dialogue. I, I think a partnership in, in workforce development uh, with the city w w would be fantastic. I mean, this year we had a, a, a Equipment Expo uh, between the contractors here in town. You know, it was like a digger days in Bozeman. We, we did that. We had young people come in and run equipment and everything else, and they got to do mortar and bricks and everything else. That was over at the fort. That, that was a big hit this year. Uh, so I, I would think involvement like that would be really a fantastic partnership uh, other than controlling the contractors, how they operate their workforces. That's my concern. You guys have the low bid. Let the contractor go go do that to get your lowest cost on, on your facilities, uh, and and working together, in workforce development I think is a better option. I appreciate that. All right, so that was uh, Dave Zinke, uh, kind of given his. Um, um, comments on this, of course. Primarily, Dave wants the city to only be involved if it doesn't show any favoritism towards one contractor, contractor over another, because apprenticeships that are being sponsored by the city of Missoula tends to go for the lowest bids, and. Um, Chief of Contracts, and that would create the unfair competition that uh, Dave Zinke and other uh, contractors in the city of Missoula are also concerned about as well. This will be tabled until another meeting, which will happen on October the 10th, which is a Wednesday. Uh, but of course, thus concludes the city council report. Of course, to find out more information about your city council and more, you can log on to CI. Dot Missoula dot MT dot US. It is a wonderful website where you can learn everything you need to know about the city of Missoula, permits, upcoming things, contracts. Um, this is a good way to actually uh, find um, gigs and jobs through the city uh, to contract you out of um, as well. So this is a good opportunity for anybody who is a contractor. But also, um, they also have art committees. Uh, so if anybody is interested in doing art calls and stuff like that, they also provide that through the City of Missoula's website. All right. <clears throat> so that pretty much does it for all your City of Missoula needs. If you are interested in finding out more about 
MCAT, where you can uh, watch all these meetings and more. You can go to MCAT.org. Um, you can watch us on channel 189 or 190 on Charter Cable. Um, we're live uh, right now, uh, but of course, if you're watching this afternoon, we were live around 9 a.m. I still have some time, so I'm going to do some uh, events um, as soon as I get done with another... Uh, clip for you guys. Um, these are a bunch of clips that are happening this weekend. I did not show you any new programs that are happening over the weekend. So uh, without further ado, here is some new, um, a bunch of new stuff that are going to be happening over this weekend that you guys can enjoy. So when I come back, I'll talk about events. <laughs> is going to sound odd, but don't be disappointed in some of the size of your gifts. Um, I've done a lot of fundraising and one time the envelope came back to me and it, it rattled. And I'm like, are you serious? I, mean, I literally thought, I got change. And I opened it up and it was a dollar and 63 cents. And I thought, oh man, inside of that was a note. And it was from a lady who I knew who said she was having a really hard time in life. Her husband was really sick. He wasn't able to work. The only spare money she had was $1.63. But she believed in the cause I was asking for, and she believed in it. She gave me a buck sixty-three. Wow. And I learned right then, and you can't ever be disappointed. What that told me was, when I got that, it just means I need to make another ask. Doesn't mean I stop asking. I just ask more people. And so, I know it sounded odd to say not be disappointed, but it's not the number on the checks, it's the number of checks you get. This is a lot of what this is, and 2016 is not exceptional in this regard. Uh, since the advent of the modern campaign in 1960, this has been the mode that you reach a lot of the country through television advertising, and then you reach a lot of the country by shaking hands and doing camp candidate visits and rallies and so forth. Right. So, the, the Electoral College really dictates the states that matter to the detriment of other states that don't matter. We need to acknowledge the fact that asking questions as well as challenging the responses to those questions is what we do as faculty every day in our own work, in our disciplines, and it is arguably the most important outcome of our students' education here. And we need to acknowledge that for UM to transform lives, we all must be committed to introspection and informed action alike. We value diversity of opinions and perspectives in shaping our path to the future. And so I look forward to working with a renewed spirit of collaboration, both among the faculty and across the entire campus. So there's plenty of, there's an ample forage on the, the Henry's to, to for all, you know, all the animals. But sometimes the, the problem is, is they want to use the same places. So it's more of a distribution than it is the amount of forage. And so right now we're trying to work through that by maybe trying to, we're trying to come up with a cooperative grazing management plan. It's a real process. It's going to be very similar to uh, the whole process we've been through. But we're actually in the middle of negotiations about that right now, trying to figure out how to move cattle have the ability to move cattle into areas where bison aren't using so or if they if they move you know where we can change things around so it's pretty complex but uh, we've got some situations in northern Utah right now where we just went, where they just implemented a cooperative grazing scheme on an entire uh, watershed and it's it's actually probably going to work out really well that's the same kind of thing we're working for so we need to look
Hey guys, we got a lot of <clears throat> events happening uh, this week as this weekend, particularly uh, hazardous waste days are going on right now. So if you have anything that um, is hazardous waste, you know, chemicals, bleach, that kind of thing, and you want to just uh, get rid of it and toss it out, you're not you're not supposed to throw it away in your trash. Just so you guys know, um, you could actually see a fine and get uh, get a problem with the problem with that. So of course it is hazardous waste days, and it's happening today and tomorrow at the city shops at the corner of Scott and Turner Street. Streets, um, 9 a.m. to about 5:30, and then uh, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Dispose oil-based paints, thinners, pesticides, solvates. Latex paint is not accepted. Um, it can be dried out with a kitty litter and thrown away. Um, there is a uh, free and some items. Um, call the Missoula Valley Water Quality District at 258. 4890 for more information. Again, that number is 258-4890. They usually do has waste days twice a year, I believe. Uh, they might be doing it three times a year soon. Uh, Tiny Tales and Story Time happening at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. this morning. If you have a kid and you want them to learn all damn books, um, it's a good way to get your kids engaged with reading at the Missoula Public Library starting at 11, uh, 10.30 at the Missoula Public Library. Pressure. Everything's under pressure, but you can learn about pressure with Jen Fowler, which is a special guest at uh, Spectrum Discovery Center. Um, they're going to be uh, learning spirographs in the makerspace, and this is at Spectrum Discovery Center at 812 Tool Avenue. Their uh, facility is open at 11 a.m. Yarns and watercolor. Go back to the Museum Public Library to stitch, or you can do some painting with some watercolor um, at the Museum Public Library starting at 12. And also around 12 o'clock, if you're interested in having a little bit of lunch and doing a little uh, bit of board games, whether it be cribbage or bridge, um, or some of the games that they have at the Missoula Senior Center, come join them at the, the best dance floor in the city of Missoula at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30. Um, Fall risk screening, Missoula Senior Center. Uh, this uh, falls are not a consequence of aging, although one in four seniors fall every second. Um, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of seniors falling. Sorry, I don't mean to make a joke about this, but it's true. Come to this free fall risk screening to understand your personal risk and learn ways to reduce the risk of falling. And this is going to be at the Missoula Senior Center. So. Hey, while you guys are uh, tearing it up on the dance floor, learn how not to fall or it, maybe fall right or figure out a ways to uh, improve your skills on preventing fall. So here is a tip for anybody who, um, um, you know, a lot of people are like, okay, I just avoid stairs. Okay, so here are the, some, there's a lot of footwear you should not be wearing, high heels, um, slippers, or Crocs. Crocs are basically a glorified slippers. So anything that slips on or doesn't have any kind of, um, um, uh, doesn't have a heel on their shoe, um, those are not acceptable in terms of footwear because you could fall and trip. Um, <coughs> Endeavor is a, uh, as I like to call it, a um, educational school co-op. It's PTA without the T part. Um, they're doing a free Endeavor fr uh, Friday Lego Club starting at 1.30 this afternoon. And at 2.30 this afternoon, they're doing an experimental learning space. Uh, this is at 1905 West Sussex Avenue. All children must be accompanied by an adult. This is a not a drop of an event. This is a kind of a meet and greet event with the parents and kids. And these are for uh, a lot of times for homeschool kids who are interested in working with other kids who are also homeschooled, but also kind of pooling resources together to create an assortment of education and socialization. So this happens um, through Endeavor. It's a good thing. We've worked with Endeavor before. Uh, we had a, a, a short little stint with them. Uh, we're always looking forward to working with many community partners as well, uh, as long as they are a nonprofit after all. All right, Scorcha Festival has happened in Missoula County Fairgrounds, or Missoula Fairgrounds, sorry, it's not even county anymore, it's basically in the city limits. Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 3 p.m., pretty much going all day, this afternoon until all night, CV Aoki, all sorts of uh, the fifth annual Scorcher Festival, it's a brand new Scorcher experience like anything done before, beautiful blending arts and sounds, um, 3 p.m., doors open, 4 p.m. show, ages 16 um, and over, unless accompanied by an adult. Tickets are available at Rockin' Rudy's Ear Candy. You can also go online for more information. All you got to look up is Scorcha. Um, yeah, and also at the Missoula Fairgrounds, hey, at the 4-H building, is they have a gun show. So right next to all the dancing and raven c creatures that are happening uh, from 3 to 5 p.m., uh, today they're having a gun show. Nine to five tomorrow is going to have a gun show. Sunday nine to three is going to be a gun show. It's the home art, 
Home Arts Building, number 35 at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Family Friendly Friday is kicking off again every Friday at the Top Hat from 6 to 9 p.m. And this is a fun way to uh, have your kids there with you while you drink. And they have drink specials. Okay. Cheap night, date night is the Missoula Public Library. Avengers Infinity War will be playing at the uh, Missoula Public Library at 7 p.m. It's a long movie, so, hey, you can call 721-BOOK, 721-2665 for more information about this. But I'm pretty sure just show up and watch Avengers Infinity War playing at the Missoula Public, Public Library. But also tonight, MCAT's going to be live streaming the Hellgate vs. CMR game. It's Hellgate's homecoming game. Last week, Hellgate High School beat Big Sky High School in football. And, um... From what my I can recollect, and a lot of our uh, Hellgate um, High School employees that work here, Hellgate hasn't won a football game in 10 years. So we're, uh, we're um, it should be pretty exciting to see how they play against CMR Russell out of Great Falls tonight at 7 p.m. And if you can't make it to uh, the MCPS Stadium, um, aptly located at uh, 3100 South Avenue, Big Sky High School, uh, which is where they have the stadium. <coughs> um, you can watch it on our Facebook page, um, Missoula's Community Media Resource. If you like us, you get all notifications about when we uh, are go, go live. So you can check all that out and more, Missoula's Community Media Resources Facebook page. All right, so let's skip on over to Saturday. If you guys are interested in going out and about on uh, Saturday, uh, kicking things off is the Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market's still going on strong. Um, Two weeks from this Saturday is our homecoming parade, so um, Farmer's Market will be still going strong well into October, so from 8 to 1 p.m. Farmer's Market, rather Red X is. Pine Street will have the People's Market, and underneath the Higgins Bridge, where you can troll all you want, is the Clark Fork River Market, all happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Diva Day, Diva Day 5K um, Community Medical Center is uh, celebrating women um, in Missoula and throughout Western Montana in the Diva 5K Run Walk event. Be part of this event that promotes empowering women of all ages and abilities. Western Montana Divas are resilient, influential, fierce, confident, powerful, determined, strong, buzzwords. Join our community of mothers, daughters, sisters, grandmothers, friends, and family and make the most of this awesome morning filled with physical activities, um, camaraderie, and laughter. And it's uh, all participants receive a finisher's um, medal, exclusive race swag, access to Diva Day Expo, all sorts of stuff, and um, Run Wild Missoula members receive a $2 discount. Uh, family fun time at the Missoula YMCA from 9 to about 12.30 p.m. YMCA promotes the uh, family uh, activities at the YMCA off of their Russell, um, um, Russell uh, location. Sorry. Um, so this is a fun film time. It's twenty-two dollars per family. Uh, so you can have a family of eight kids, and it costs twenty-two dollars. Hey, you save money. <laughs> and uh, starting at nine a.m. tomorrow morning. And also, there's a lot of stuff happening. It's the seventh and seventh 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 seventh, seventh annual baby fair is going to be at Caris Park starting at ten a.m. So if you're at the farmers market, anyways, go check out the baby fair, and they'll be teaching kids and. Um, about you know you know like activities fun activities because this is a good way to uh, um, find the right kind of things um, they also uh, have animal wonders there so they're going to have animals child boom guitar center kanga training salon auction food ice cream all what you can expect from any event that happens and this is happening at Karis Park starting at 10 a.m. National Public Lands Day at Milltown State Park Milltown State Park is looking for v volunteers to help keep their park up and also creating some um, trails. So it's a new uh, part of the TLC. The, the 0.5 mile floodplain trail has almost vanished from the landscape and they need to bring it back to life. Join Montana State Park's AmeriCorps members for some beautiful days alongside the Clark Fork River taking in views and digging up the dirt. Milltown State Park was created after uh, years after they tore down the uh, Mil uh, the Bonner Milltown Dam. So Milltown State Park is a new park, uh, relative new park just beyond the Bitterroot Trail if you go further um, east out of Missoula. So you can check that out. And also, I just want to thank once again our uh, our guests here um, for joining me th this morning. Um, th the Dance-a-thon is kicking off Saturday at 1 p.m. And from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., it's going to be celebrating uh, each decade of dance from the 1920s to the 1990s. All sorts of dance, all sorts of things, all sorts of organizations coming together to uh, help raise $10,000 or more 
I mean, you never ask for too much money in a fundraiser um, at the MCT fundraiser. MCT, it's going to be at MCT Center for, 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 for Performing Arts. It's $10 to just go in and speculate. Or if you feel really confident, you'll jump up on stage and dance. But don't expect to go to the dance-a-thon and not dance. So that's starting at 1 p.m. Um, also starting at 1 p.m. in conjunction with everything else is our Saturday drop-ins. Hey, guys, if you have a kid you want to drop off here on our Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m., MCAT has Saturday drop-ins. $10 a pop, $10 a kid. Um, it's fun. Stop animation activities. If your kid is interested in doing a half day, maybe even checking it out, just a little little taste of some stop animation stuff. Starting, uh, uh, They have half days for $5, so you can check all that out. Um, Grizz football, Washington Grizzly Stadium. You can come cheer on the Grizzlies as they take on Sacramento State, which is one of their mini rivals. Um, <laughs> uh, that's all happening at 1. There's three different events happening at 1 p.m. You have all the options. Um, usually there's literally nothing happens in the afternoons on Saturdays or pretty much any other day, but MCAT, the University of Montana, and MCT has everything that you need to enjoy your afternoon right. Um, 18th annual fall gathering, Moon Randolph Homestead. Um, Saturday, 22nd, a uh, full moon, ha full harvest moon, and another season's gone by in the Moon Randolph Homestead's 18th annual fall gathering. They harvest feast, cider, and beer, apple pressing, live music, at the Scrappy Yard Lullaby West Fork Music, and dancing under the full harvest moon. Family friendly, the fall gathering is the largest event in the fundraiser of the year, supporting the efforts exploring and celebrating Missoula's human, ecological, and agri agricultural history. All, pre all proceeds benefit the Moon Randolph Homestead. And also tonight, if you're can't get enough of that Grizz. Grizz Volleyball. Um, the, the Lady Grizz Volleyball team takes on Portland State. Another state um, named after a city. Um, <laughs> uh, Sunday. Yes, there is a Sunday. Um, let's kick some things into Sunday. Of course, I've probably gone over my time, but who cares? Save Kids, uh, Missoula State Fair Community Medical Center starting at 12 p.m. Join us for the 2018 Kids State Fair. Um, it's fun, free field activities happening at the Community Medical Center, and this is to encourage kids to be safe and, and work and actually meet and greet some of the uh, fire workers um, in a positive experience and learning how kids can um, go through a, a smoke vehicle. So if they're, they, they have a trailer that they bring out and they uh, have a pretend fire and stuff going on like that as well. And the Kids Carnival for Cause Wagon Dog Dog Park on September 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. Wagon is the host uh, Kids Carnival to give back to Missoula community and the kids at the uh, Ronald McDonald House. Proverella Center, Washington Children's Shelter, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. All proceeds go from the carnival go back to these groups. Um,